All right, if you're watching this, you're probably a hooper, you play basketball to some extent. So that means I can already tell one thing about you. You've dealt with confidence issues. Trust me, it's nothing to be ashamed about. At some point, every single basketball player in the world has dealt with confidence issues. It's just the nature of the game. We care about something a lot. We wanna be good at it because we care about it. And sometimes when we're not the best, when we don't play our best, when we feel like we're a little bit above our heads, we struggle a bit with that confidence. And in traveling to tons of countries and cities this past year to work with hoopers, this is the question that I've gotten the most. How can I build up my confidence and do it for the long run? And this is a great question. I think confidence can truly separate two players, even if they have the same skill level. So we have player A, this player has the exact same skill level as player B. This player is much more confident in their game and their performance levels. This player is a little bit shaky when they get into a game on that. And because of that, basketball will take player A much further than player B. So how can you get more from player B to player A? Let's talk about it in this video. Now, the nature of this video will be me giving you tools. I'm not gonna give you the perfect fix, the magic fix. That's just not possible, I promise you. So if you're looking for it, I would probably stop looking for it because it just doesn't exist. So sometimes you're gonna have to take that long route rather than taking the quick, easy one. This is one of those cases. But I do think with these five tools that I'm gonna give you, you're gonna be able to use these in any situation where you don't feel that confidence. And after you get really good at applying these tools, you will be a much more confident hooper. Some of these will work better for you. Some of these won't work as well for you. It's always gonna change depending on who you are. But if you really learn how to use and apply these things, I promise you, you'll get more confident in the long run. So the first tool is gonna be reappraising your nerves. A lot of the time when athletes, basketball players feel like they don't have confidence, it can end up in being nervous. Right? If you're not truly confident in your game or you care about something a lot again, you're probably going to end up feeling a little bit of nerves or anxiety, whatever you want to call it. Now, what reappraising this is, it's a big word for just calling it something else. So instead of saying, wow, I'm nervous, we're saying, oh, no, this isn't nerves. This is excitement. This is me loving the game and being ready to take on this challenge. And there's a lot of research behind it that you guys don't really care about, a bunch of scientific stuff. It basically says that when somebody feels, quote unquote, nervous, and they literally just say out loud, I'm excited for this. They actually perform a lot better in that task. And the reason for this is because in our body, physiologically, these two are almost the same thing. You being nervous and you being excited, if I were to just do a scan of your body when you're nervous and when you're excited, it would probably be the same thing. But some people call it nerves and they perform worse. Some people call it excitement and they perform better. It's just your body getting you ready for something that you care about. So every single time you feel a little bit nervous and because of that, your confidence starts to slack. All you have to do is just reappraise those nerves as no, I'm excited. I can't wait to play in this game. Say it out loud, talk to your teammates about it. And I promise you, you're gonna be able to take those nerves and turn them into excitement because of that take your confidence to the next level and take your play to the next level number two is going to be putting basketball into perspective so where i see a lot of players struggle with confidence and i did this so much when i was younger is literally identifying as a basketball player you're not a human who plays basketball amongst many other things you're a basketball player and because of this when you play bad at basketball you are therefore a bad human, a bad person, bad everything. On the flip side of this, I think the best players in the world put in perspective that yes, basketball is probably what they care about the most, but there's a lot more that goes into their lives, their existence than just basketball. So for example, again, using me as kind of a case study here, I used to deal with confidence so much. I would get nervous. I would overthink everything. You already know the deal on that one. And it truly hindered my game. I had a ton of skills. I had a decent feel for the game, but when I got into a real game, I just couldn't apply it. Now, when I stopped playing basketball or officially stopped playing basketball, kind of cut my career to focus on the training side of things. Literally within a month, my end game skills just went through the roof. Now, why is this? Well, without even knowing it, I made that shift in my mind from a player to now a trainer to a coach. So I knew that how I played on the basketball court, yes, I cared about it, but that didn't make me who I was. Since I didn't care about that as much, I was able to stay more even keel when something bad happened, when something good happened, and just maintain a more stable level of confidence. Whereas when I was playing, something bad happened on the court, boom, I crashed and something good happened. I was all the way up here. So if you're able to put basketball in perspective that one game really doesn't matter that much when you look back in 20 years and that you can still go home and live a decent life even after a bad game, probably gonna be able to keep a higher level of confidence because you're not getting affected by this so much. And I'm not saying don't care as much, I'm just saying put it in perspective. Number three is being experienced and working through challenges. So it's like working out in the weight room, right? 
Every single time you lift a certain amount of weight, your body adapts to that stimulus. You get used to lifting that difficult amount of weight, and then you're able to lift a little bit more and a little bit more as you repeat that process. Now, it's not always this simple as we know, especially me as a performance coach, but this is also kind of how confidence works in my opinion. If you put yourself in a situation where you're not fully confident about it, in other words, lifting a weight, it's a little bit tough for you. Once you do get through that situation, even if it was tough, your confidence levels are gonna go up. So the best players that I see are constantly challenging themselves, constantly challenging their confidence levels because this is how you grow your confidence. So it's gonna require you to put yourself in tough situations. Play against older players, play against better players. Play in that gym that you've been a little bit weary of playing in because it's a high level of competition. And this doesn't just go for the basketball court, this can go for school, this can go for business, this can go for your relationships. Talk to somebody that you have kind of a grudge against and that you've been fearing a little bit, and it's gonna build your confidence in just having these social interactions. The more that you put yourself in tough situations and work through these things, the more that you're gonna get confident in these tough situations, which will apply to the tough situation that is the game of basketball that you've been struggling with. Number four is being able to take control of your mind. Obviously, we never want to have confidence issues. It's kind of our mind just living its own life, and doing its own thing. We can't really control it. But when you start to apply some techniques to be able to take control of your mind, you're gonna be able to control these confidence levels a lot better. So this could be meditation, right? Just being able to sit with your thoughts for 10 minutes and learn how to take control of your mind. So this can be breathing, using your breath to just recenter your mind. And this can also be being super cognizant of when your mind starts to stray, when that confidence and it starts to get pulled down by your brain and readjusting it every time. So every time you feel yourself doubting or saying, dang, I can't shoot or anything that's just kind of negatively pulling you down, you readjust it. You don't hate yourself for doing this. It's gonna happen. Every single player in the world is gonna have negative thoughts. But if you're able to pull your mind back into control, to take away those thoughts, say, okay, that just happened, but I did a good job of pulling those thoughts back into control. It's not gonna happen right away, but eventually you're gonna get better at controlling your mind, and as a result, maintaining higher levels of confidence. And then lastly, and potentially the most important one, is building a good relationship with failure. Everyone in the world fails, I promise you. This is something that I really had to learn, because you don't see it, especially with social media these days. You see the best high school players in the world, obviously all the NBA players, and you don't even see them fail. We see their highlights. We see the best things that they do. And not only do they fail in a game, but they fail in workouts. They fail in their personal life. And when you understand that everyone out there is making bad passes, missing shots, saying the wrong thing at time, just overall going through failures, it's gonna help you completely shift your perspective. And because of this one error or two errors or a few errors or even a lot of errors, don't mean that you're bad at something. If you miss 10 shots, bro, I don't care. Steph Curry's missed 10 in a row before because temporary failure does not mean permanent failure. Just because you performed badly at something doesn't mean that you're bad at something and doesn't mean that you can't improve at that. We wanna have a growth mindset to know that we're able to improve these things, but also to know that we're not inherently bad at something because we performed badly. Plus, you have time. You have time to improve these things. I don't care how old you are. I talk to high school players all the time who are like, oh, my clock's running out. I'm already 17, 18 years old. I don't have any scholarship offers. All right, big deal. Maybe you're gonna be a little bit behind. Are you gonna fold because of that? Or are you gonna look at that like your back's against the wall and make something happen? Because I know players who have gone through crazy stories They've ended up playing college basketball at 21, 22 years old. Players have started playing professional basketball past their 30s. You have time, I promise you that. Don't go on everyone else's clock and consider yourself a failure because you haven't achieved something by a certain time period or just an arbitrary age that you think is the perfect time. You're not, I guarantee you, you have time, you can fail. This is gonna help build you up. And that's the last thing to understand is that even when you feel like you're set back, these failures are building you up for what's coming. If you allow failure to teach you, it's not gonna pull down your confidence. In fact, it may improve your confidence because you know you're battle tested. And when you know you're battle tested, that confidence is gonna be at a higher level in every single game, in every single practice. And even when it comes down, you're gonna be able to pull it right back up. So again, I don't have all the answers here. I wish I could give you guys just a simple fix to get more confident, to become the most confident player on the court. But that's just not how it works with anything. But I do think that these are five really useful tools that you can use not only on the basketball court, but off the court to just become a more confident player, more confident person in general. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at by any means basketball for a lot more like this. And let me know your experiences and trying these tools out. Let's get confident together. As always, thank you guys so much. Stay tuned until next time. 
gonna keep it real, I use DoorDash way too much to save time, which is why we've now partnered with DoorDash to make sure that you get on the wave as well. For a limited time, our viewers can get 50% off up to a $20 value and $0 delivery fees when you download the DoorDash app and enter code by any means. Don't forget, that's code by any means for 50% off up to a $20 value and $0 delivery fees with DoorDash. That's 50% off up to a $20 value and $0 delivery fees when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code by any means. Subject to change, terms apply.